Project Zach Self-Training, the Visual Gantt Editor. This video will give you an in-depth overview of the features of the Project Zach Visual Gantt Editor and how you can use it to manage your project schedule. When you create a new Project Zach project, the Gantt Editor opens by default. Let's go ahead and create a new blank project. To do this, click on the Create New Project link on the Project Zach homepage. Keep the blank default project type. Once you complete the new project process, you will see the welcome screen. Go ahead and close this pop-up. If your Gantt editor has not loaded properly, you may not have the correct Java plugin loaded. You should go to www.java.com and get the latest Java plugin. Once you do this, you'll need to restart your browser and log in to Project Zach again. Before we go any further, Let's take a look at the different parts of the Gantt Editor screen. At the top right corner of the Gantt Editor screen is the Full Screen button. This allows you to work with a larger canvas. Let's click that now. As you can see, the Gantt Editor now uses the whole screen. This will become important when you're working with larger sets of project tasks. Let's look at the layout of the screen now. There are three panes in the Gantt Editor. On the left is the Task List Grid, which lists the tasks in your project. The columns that are displayed are configurable, and we'll take a look at that in a few minutes. On the right side of the screen is the Visual Project Timeline, which will illustrate the schedule, current completion status, and other information about your project laid out over a weekly schedule. On the bottom is the Resource Pane. This is where we'll add the people that will be performing your project tasks. Finally, at the top of the screen is the toolbar. When you mouse over any of the toolbar buttons, a tooltip will appear that shows you what the button does. The first three buttons are the data toolbar. The data toolbar has three buttons. Save, which will turn red when data is waiting to be saved. Refresh, which will reload all of the data in the Gantt editor. And undo, which will roll back the last change that you made. The next two buttons are the task toolbar. The star button will allow you to create a new work breakdown structure entry, task, or milestone. You should think about your work breakdown structure as a tree. The WBS entries are the branches of the tree, and the tasks and milestones are the leaves. A task is an item of work that needs to be completed in the project, and a milestone is a deadline for some set of work to be completed. We'll talk more about those later. The second button on the task menu is the delete button, which will delete all of the rows that you have selected in the task list. The next two buttons are the copy paste toolbar. These buttons allow you to copy and paste rows of the task list. The next set of buttons is the Gantt navigation toolbar. And the last four buttons are the display options toolbar. We'll spend more time on those once we've created some tasks. Before we go any further, Let's add some resources to our project. At the bottom of the Gantt editor is the Resources pane. Click on the arrow on the pane border and show the Resources pane. Because we started from scratch, only the project manager's name is listed. If you wish to add a person, simply start typing their name. I'll type Al and choose Al Mass to be part of the project. You'll have to choose a name from your directory. Once you add a resource to the team, you can assign a role. By default, all new team members are given the team member role. In this case, Al is going to work as a project manager, so I will assign him the project manager role. Let's keep working with resources. Let's say you don't know all of the people who will be working on your project. If you just want to put in a placeholder, such as architect or developer, you can do that too. Notice that when I type in Architect, it creates a resource, but it shows this icon that denotes that this is not a real person. We'll talk about how to handle these placeholders a little later. Make sure you add the Architect placeholder and the Developer placeholder, and then hit Save. If you need to, pause the video at this point. Now, we'll go ahead and create a simple project schedule. First, you'll notice that the Root Work Breakdown Structure category is named by default with the project name. You can change this or any other task or category label 
by clicking first on the task row and then on the task name. Let's rename the root entry and call it New Portal Development. The root entry of a project is the highest level work breakdown structure category for the project. It cannot be removed and everything else in the project is under this category. Now that we've made a change to the schedule, you'll see that the save icon at the top left hand corner of the Gantt editor has turned red, which means that changes are ready to save. Although you do not have to save every time you make a change, it is a good idea to save frequently. Let's save now. Let's look at what we can create in the Gantt editor task list. Remember that you can use the toolbar actions to add items to the task list, but you can also use the contextual menu. When you right click on the task list, you see a contextual menu that allows you to create a work breakdown structure entry, a task, or a milestone. First, we'll create a WBS entry for the initiation phase. To do this, we simply right click the root WBS entry and choose Create WBS Entry. Then complete the pop up dialog information. Once you've done this, go ahead and save. If you need a little more time, pause the video now. Now we'll create some tasks. We won't be making an entire project plan here but we'll describe many of the options you have to manage your project tasks. Just to make it easier, we'll create four tasks under our new Phase 1 WBS entry. You can call them Tasks 1 through 4 or anything you wish. I'll call mine Tasks 1 through 4. You can create a task in several ways. First, you can right-click on the WBS entry that you would like the task to fall under and choose Task. We'll call this one Task 1. Second, you can create a new WBS task or milestone from the toolbar by clicking the New button, which has a star on it. Or, you can simply double click the row underneath the last task and type in the name of the task you wish to create. For now, we'll just double click and create the rest of our tasks. If you need to, pause the video at this point and create your tasks. Once you've done this, go ahead and save. Now we'll go back to our tasks and do some more work on them, including assigning them to resources, setting their durations and constraints, and working with other properties. To modify a task, you have several options. First, you can modify the properties that are in the task grid directly. In this case, we can modify the start date, end date, work required, and resources information about the task because they are visible in the grid. Let's change task 1 to be a 40 hour task and to be assigned to the architect. To do this, simply click once to bring focus to the work required field and then click once again to change the field into edit mode. Type in 40 hours and hit enter. Then click on the resources field, then click the drop down arrow and choose architect. Go ahead and save now. There are a lot more properties that you can set on tasks. To work with all of the properties of a task, you need to bring up the Properties panel by double-clicking the task. Let's double-click on Task 2. You'll see that when you're in the Task Properties panel, you can set a number of properties for the tasks. We'll change the duration of Task 2 to 80 hours, and we will assign the task to the architect. Note that you can change the units of your task durations as well. We're also going to set a new predecessor for this task. When we open the predecessor section, we can click the plus icon and choose one or more tasks to be predecessors of this one. Also, notice that you can set any of the four standard predecessor relationships for each predecessor chosen. After we set these properties, let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, let's save again. Sometimes you may wish to have a whole series of tasks follow one after another. One way that this can be done is to open each task and set a predecessor. But there is an easier way. Let's click on Task 2 and then hold down Shift and click Task 4. This will highlight all of the tasks between Task 2 and 4. Now right click the highlighted tasks and choose Chain Tasks you will see that all of the tasks are now linked 
and follow one another in a linear series. Go ahead and hit Save. Now let's add some columns to our task list, which can help us see what we've done so far. To select the columns to show in the task list, click on the Visible Columns button on the toolbar. This will show all of the possible columns that you can add to the task list. Let's add predecessors and progress columns. Check these off and then click OK. You'll see the new columns in the Gantt editor now. However, you may wish to rearrange the columns. This is very easy in the Projectzect Gantt editor. Simply click on the header of the column you wish to move and drag it to where you'd like it to show up. Now let's look at the navigation toolbar. You may now have tasks that extend beyond the right side of the screen. To scroll to the right, click the single right arrow button which will scroll one page to the right. Clicking the double arrow will take you to the last page. The left arrows work in the same way. Clicking on the single left arrow scrolls you left one page and clicking the double arrow scrolls all the way to the beginning of the project. Go ahead and scroll so that you can see task 1. Another way that you can change the start date, end date, and duration of a task is to use the drag and drop feature of the Visual Gantt Editor. When you mouse over a task, you'll see that your mouse pointer changes shape. When the mouse pointer changes to a double arrow with a percent sign, you can use it to set the percentage completed for a task. Let's set task 1 to about 25% complete. You can also use the pointing finger icon to change the start date and reduce or add to the amount of work for the task. Let's click with the pointer finger at the right side of task 1 and make it a bit shorter. Now, let's save. We haven't assigned resources to task 3 and 4 yet. These tasks are both going to be assigned to the developer. Let's add the developer to the task in a new way. You can go to the Resources pane and click and drag the resource to the task to assign it. Let's drag and drop the developer to task 3, then do the same thing for task 4. Now, let's save. We put in the architect and developer placeholders earlier. Now we know who is going to be assigned to the project. To replace a resource in the project, simply go to the row where the placeholder resource is and start typing the new name. Once you choose a name, all project assignments will be changed to the new person. I'll choose Philip Collins as my architect and Amanda Calder as my developer. As you can see, all of the tasks assigned to the architect and developer are now properly assigned to Phil and Amanda. Let's save. Finally, let's look at the filtering and display options that the Gantt editor provides. By default, the Gantt editor always displays everything, meaning that there is no filter applied. On our project, that's not an issue since we only have a few tasks. On a real project though, there are lots of reasons why you would want to filter your tasks. By default, ProjectZec doesn't have any filters defined. We'll go ahead and define one now. In this case, we're going to create a filter that displays only those tasks that are less than 50% completed. To do this, we click the Filter button on the toolbar and click New Filter. We will give it the name Less Than 50% Complete. Then we hit the plus button to add a criterion for our filter. We'll choose the Progress field. Depending on the type of field you choose to filter on, different operators are listed. Because progress is a number field, the greater than, less than, and equal operators are visible. We'll choose less than or equal to, then type 50 into the value. When applied, this filter will only show tasks that are less than 51% completed. When we click OK, the filter will be automatically applied. The filter icon on the toolbar is red to remind you that a filter has been applied. Just to see how it works, let's set the filter back to none. Now let's change task 3 to be 100% complete. Now let's go back to the filter button and apply our newly created filter. As you can see, the 100% completed task is no longer showing. Let's click Save. Now let's take the filter off. One last thing. The filter that you define are your personal filters and will be available on all of your projects. 
Finally, you have a number of options to view the critical path in the visual Gantt chart. To highlight the critical path, simply select Highlight Critical Path. This will highlight the critical path in red. You also have the options to highlight near critical path items, over allocations, and to display financial tracking. For more details about these features, please see the online help. Although this has been a short introduction, you can see the ProjectZec Visual Gantt Editor is a rich, fully featured application that can meet the needs of your project manager, whether the project is simple and small or extremely large and complex. Thank you for watching.